Y2 No Nonsense No Alley here. Today I'm going to show you the technique I use to lubricate cables. These cables are off my boat. Uh, I'm not going to show you exactly how to remove everything from the boat. I might do a further video about that. But basically this has both your throttle and shift cable and when you would put this boat in the gear was very very stiff. So I first removed this from the boat and I can see that this is not the issue. This you know rotates very smoothly and clean. If you are doing boat cables, keep in mind you have adjustments here. You have a friction adjustment, which uh, allows friction on the here, and then you have a detent adjustment, which uh, adjusts the, the ball detent back here. So bear that in mind. What the point of this video is to show you the technique I use to lubricate cables. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up, check out the channel if it helps out, maybe even subscribe. All right, so got the cables off the boat here. Uh, if you're doing boat cables, I recommend taking the measurement from here to here prior to removing them because these do spin on here and you have adjustment there. Uh, again, not going to go into the adjustment here, but uh, you know, you measure them before if everything was good before, should be good afterward. Now, do you have to remove the cables from the boat? No, but I like to because you know what? It makes it a little bit easier. Now these cables right now are real tight. A couple things, go over the cables first, make sure you don't have any frays or cracks, anything like that. If they're super tight and you got problems with them, you know, they're, they're frayed on the inside, you're going to have to replace the cables. But if they're not, let's get to the point here. So what I use is my uh, patented cable lubricant. Now, so it's basically a mix of ultra slick assembly lube and SAE 30 motor oil. Um, so, you know, you get nice, you want thick oil in there. If you use a light oil, it just doesn't tend to last as long. If your cables are really tight, you might want to use automatic transmission fluid or rust penetrant first instead of using the oil and blow them out and kind of clean all that crud out of there. So the tool is basically an airline fitting here, a ball valve, then the hose attached there. Of course, you got the barb fitting on here, similar to this. You can use different styles like this one here, you know, for bigger hose on there if you need to. Because basically what you got to do here is you got to slip this over and you got to slip it over the obstruction on the hose. Of course, I don't have to go that far because I can slip it right to here. So the process, pretty simple and elementary. Take your cable lube and fill the hose up with really more than you need. Fill that up in there. Take this, pull the cable out, slip her over, and then take, you know, and obviously if you're doing motorcycle cables or depending on what you're doing, you're gonna have to use uh, a different size hose. But this is just to show you really what I do here. And um, of course other people have probably done this technique too. Anyway, so flip it upside down like that. Let it chill for a second. Now, you know, that lubricant's just hanging out in there. We can take our compressed air hook it up at this point put your safety glasses on very important and make sure whatever hose you're using is rated for high pressure this hose right here is rated for 200 psi as you can see right there because uh, otherwise it's going to blow up in your face and shoot oil all over you anyway so now i can go ahead and open my valve here and this might blow off and shoot oil everywhere so if it does that would be kind of funny but boom so now you can see it's shooting out here a little bit if you run into that problem well uh you know that's a problem. <laughs> and for every problem there's a solution, so I just took some duct tape, a couple hose clamps, because of course we want the oil coming out on this side, not out of this hole here. So let's see what happens now. Again, turn this vertically and open up the hose. You'll also notice I put a couple zip ties on here to hold this, because you can have, with, with the pressure in there, once it gets oil on it, this might want to pop off of here, you know, since the brass is not barbed and it's just kind of sitting on there. Uh, you know, so that's just a precaution so this doesn't blow off and shoot oil everywhere. Anyway, let's open this valve up. All right, so we got full 120 PSI in there. And now I'm looking for, leave that down there, I'm looking for oil to be coming out this side here. So keep flowing this back and forth. And after a little bit, you'll start to get nice oil flow out of there like that. Oh yeah, look at that. So now that cable is nice and lubricated up with a premium blend of lubricant, and we're good to go. Now, if you have a cable that's really stubborn, you might find yourself even leaving this overnight for that lubricant to get all the way through. Or like I said, if it's a marine cable from a jet ski and it has you know, O-rings inside of here, you leave that on overnight, it will work its way past there, especially if you keep wiggling it. Um, and again, if you have rust up in there, you can run rust penetrant through this and then follow through with some heavy oil. All right, I've removed my little duct tape patch from this joint here, and now we have a cable that Oh yeah, 
smooth as can be. So I'll get all that excess oil out of there, but this feels like a million dollars and will last for many years to come. Just to recap on some of the safety stuff, if you're using a hose that's not rated for high pressure, make sure to use a regulator and maybe only run 10 PSI or even use a bicycle pump or something. So if this thing blows up, you're not gonna hurt yourself. Definitely wear safety glasses. And of course, like I said, you don't want this thing blowing off on you. So I did that zip tie technique. I had a zip tie going around this and then around here. Um, some cables you'll find it actually has a barbed end on it. And if that's the case, then this will bite on there real good. But since this is just compression, you know, fitting on here, it's not gonna bite onto there too well and could definitely blow off with 100 PSI. Sorry if I keep repeating myself, you know, or anything in this video. I just, I'd hate to see you guys get hurt. While I'm using this blend of Ultra Slick and SAE 30 motor oil, uh, if you're lubing a cable on say a snowmobile, you might wanna use 020 oil or even a regular old cable lubricant because you know when it gets down below zero, this stuff gets pretty thick and that might not be good for you. Uh, since this is just on a, a throttle on a boat, which obviously I use in the summer mostly, this is my choice. All right, I'm gonna finish this last cable, get this thing assembled and back in the boat because I wanna hit the river tonight. Hope the video helped you out. Again, this really wasn't for showing you how to take the cables off of your boat, motorcycle, airplane, whatever it is you're working on. Just wanted to show you a technique that I use to give you some pointers on how to lubricate your cables properly. Give it a thumbs up, definitely appreciate it. Until next time, this is KZ Guy 2, woo! And uh, no nonsense, no how. You have yourself a good day. I'll see you next time.